and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is Brewing with Underwhelming Commanders, episode 16. And we are starting out this week with Keho Minamo Historian, two blue blue human wizard, two two. When Keho Minamo Historian enters the battlefield, search your library for up to three instant cards and exile them, then shuffle. And then you can pay X and tap. You may cast a card with mana value X exiled with Keho Minamo Historian without paying its mana cost. So we got a commander that is essentially a tutor. That's pretty darn good. Only 116 decks though currently on EDH Rec. So whatever the reason that may be, we will try to remedy it. So the first thing here, as I say, your commander's got a tap ability. We got to have Thousand Year Elixir, right? That's going to allow us to use our commander's ability right away and also untap it. More importantly, to use it again. That I think is going to be really important when building this deck. Mage Right Stone is going to be another one that will allow us to untap our commander to use it again. Of course, Fate Stitcher is great for that always. Chakram Retriever is going to be really good this way. Whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap target creature. So we can use our Keho, and when we cast the spell with him, obviously, we can then use our Chakram Retriever to untap it and use it again. And for that reason, I want to put Swiftfoot Boots in this deck, but not Lightning Greaves. Lightning Greaves, I don't think you want in this deck just because we have a lot of these untapping effects and a few other things that we're doing in this deck where we're going to want to target our own commander. So what are we going to do in this deck, right? We can go search our library for three instant cards. You can get whatever you want. I mean, obviously, you're going to fill this deck with instants. You're going to put all your favorites in there. You're going to have your removal. You're going to have counter spells, no question. I think you definitely want to put some blinking in here, though, right? Like an Essence Flux or a Ghostly Flicker. The reason being is because our commander has an ETB. So when you go get those three instants out of your library, I think you want to get two things that... You know whatever you want to get definitely a counter spell might be a good idea to protect your commander from being removed but also the third thing you get should be a blink spell so that after you've exhausted the two other spells now you can blink your commander it comes back into play and you can do it all over again you can also throw a thassa deep dwelling in here and all those other kinds of effects where we can just blink our commander on our end step after it's exhausted the three spells that it has and go get three more this is where thousand year elixir is going to be particularly good right because at on our end step it comes back into play and then we can immediately use it right away especially if we want to try to protect it from removal training grounds just absolutely has to go in this deck right i know this is an expensive card but if you want to make a ko deck you gotta splurge because training grounds is an auto include one blue enchantment activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate this effect can't reduce the mana to less than one so we go get that ghostly flicker out of our deck and keho wants us to pay x and tap you may cast a card with mana value x exiled with keho so we can cast our ghostly flicker if we pay three but training grounds is going to reduce that by two so now we only have to pay one to cast that ghostly flicker so you got to have this in the deck it's going to make things a lot easier on you illusionist bracers as well is going to be fantastic in the deck two mana equipment equip three whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated if it isn't a man ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, how does this work with Keho? Well, Keho says you may cast a card with mana value X exiled with Keho. So, what we're going to do if it has the Illusionist Bracers on it is we're going to pick two cards, right? It's not going to copy the spell that you're casting, it's copying the ability, right? So, what's going to happen is you're going to put this ability on the stack twice. So, you're going to pay the activation cost. Say it's three mana we're paying. You you cast the spell that you want to cast, that will resolve, and then the next ability will resolve, and you'll have to pick another card, Exiled with Keho, that costs three mana, right? The ability says you may cast a card with mana value X. So in order for this to work, you have to have two spells exiled with Keho that cost the same amount of mana so that you can cast the first one and then with the copied ability, you cast the second one. Another fantastic card I think in this deck is Veilstone Amulet. This is a great way that we can protect our commander. Three mana artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control this turn. So now we can go get that rapid hybridization for example with our Keho and if our opponents are about to remove our commander we can respond by casting the rapid hybridization on one of our opponent's creatures whatever one we want to get rid of and then this will trigger and our 
Keho will get Hexproof until end of turn. Fantastic addition in the deck, I think. And then at the end of the day, this is really a spell slinger deck. I mean, you're going to be casting instants all over the place, so tons of inclusions there, of course, that you can add in. Archmage Emiratus, I think, will be great here. Talron Sky Summoner is a great one. You know, we do need to close out the game, so effects like that are going to be great. I really like Demi Leech in this deck. That's a new card from Forgotten Realms that I think would fit here. Murktide Regent is another one. We are going to be filling our graveyard with lots of these cards, remember. Octavia, Living Thesis as well is a great fit here. After we use our Keho a few times and blink it a few times, those exiled instants, when we cast them, will then resolve and go to our graveyard, right? So we want to take advantage of that as well. I also think you probably would want to put Leyline of Anticipation and Videlkin Ori in this deck. Because we're casting lots of instants, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff on our opponent's turns, and having these cards in our deck will allow us to do everything on our opponent's turns, which is going to be a huge advantage, and also what it will allow us to cast our commander on our opponent's turns, which I think is going to be important. That way we can cast it on our opponent's end step, and then on our turn, it's unaffected by summoning sickness and ready to go, and we don't have to be so worried about it getting removed, especially if we go grab a counter spell or a flicker effect. Really interesting commander, but that is it for Keho Manamo Historian. Moving on to Terranika Akron Veteran. One white white human soldier 3-3 three, three, has vigilance and when Terranika or Akron veteran attacks untap another target creature you control until end of turn that creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gains indestructible really interesting ability I think so first of all as I mentioned all the time with underwhelming commanders our commander is a human and a soldier so tons of support there if you want to go more of a human tribe or soldier tribe theme our commander needs to attack in order to use that ability right so I think reconnaissance is a perfect fit in this deck, right? We don't want our commander dying during combat, so Reconnaissance will allow us to remove target attacking creature we control from combat and untap it. You could also throw Maze of If in here as well. That will do a similar thing where we attack with our commander, get that trigger on the stack, and then we can untap it. And we don't have to worry about it dying. Obviously, you can just throw a lot of good stuff creatures in this deck that want to have a higher power and toughness. Mirren Crusader, for example. It's got double strike protection from black and from green. Typically a 2-2. Two -two. It's looking a lot better as a 4-4 I think. I really like Stone Coil Serpent in this deck. Just cost X and it's an OO Snake with Reach Trample, protection from multicolored and it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So if we pay say two mana for this, it's going to enter the battlefield and be a 2-2 but we attack with it and our commander, we're going to untap it and it becomes a 4-4 indestructible but the counters are still on there. Remember this is an OO creature with counters on it. So it now becomes a 4-4 with two plus one plus one counters on it. And so it's a six, six reach trample protection from multicolored. That's a fantastic fit in the deck. I want to put some more interesting ones in here. Bushy Tenderfoot. This is a card that I just try to fit into so many decks because I want to flip it so bad. I've never flipped it before. It's definitely a difficult one to flip, but I think it will work here. One mana human soldier again with that human soldier. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Bushy Tenderfoot this turn dies flip Bushy Tenderfoot. Okay, so it's a 1-1. One, one. It's really difficult to have your Bushy Tenderfoot kill another creature and survive so that you can flip it. But if it's a 4-4 four, four indestructible, now it's a heck of a lot easier, right? And when it flips, it becomes Kenzo the Hard-Hearted. 3-4 with Double Strike and Bushido 2. That's pretty amazing. Also going to be even better if it's a 4-4 four, four indestructible. Deathblade Elite is a really great one in this deck. This is a really fantastic card. Underplayed, I think. Also a human soldier. One white mana, 1-1. One, one, and has this very interesting ability that I mentioned in my abilities I want to see. Wizards of the Coast Revisit Provoke. When this creature attacks, you may have target creature defending player controls untap and block it if able. And it also has one and a white prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by Deathblade Elite this turn. So this is a great way to protect another creature if you're attacking, right? So if we're attacking with our commander, we don't want our opponent to block with one of their big creatures. We force them to block the Deathblade Elite instead, and we can prevent all the damage to it so it doesn't die. Really interesting card that way if you're doing combat tricks. But again, 
again, looks a heck of a lot better if it's a 4-4 with Indestructible. Now we can just use this to start murdering our opponent's creatures, right? Any of our opponent's creatures that has a 4 toughness or less, we can just start killing them with our Deathblade Elite. We attack, we provoke it, it becomes a 4-4 Indestructible, and we run it over. Fantastic fit in this deck. Lone Rider is another great fit. One in a white human knight, 1-1. One, one. Has first strike and lifelink at the beginning of your end step. If you gained three or more life this turn, transform Lone Rider. Now, typically you would play this in a life gain deck because you have to be able to gain three life in order to transform it, but Terranika is going to turn this into a 4-4, four, four. so now all we have to do is connect with it. It's going to gain us the three life that we need to flip it over, and it turns into it that rides as one. I really like the untap part there, though, right? The fact that it turns creatures into 4-4s four, and gives them indestructible is great, but it's also untapping them, so I want to take advantage of that. We don't need to attack with that creature. We can just throw an Intrepid here in this deck. Two and a white. Again, human soldier. One, one. Tap to destroy target creature with power four or greater. So we have our intrepid hero in play. We destroy one of our opponent's big creatures. They got another one. So I'm going to attack with my Terranika. Untap my intrepid hero and then I can use it again on the same turn. Mother of Runes, of course, is a fantastic creature with a tap ability that we want to be using again and again. Another great way that we can protect our commander from dying in combat. Witch Hunter is a really interesting one. Two white, white, human cleric. It has two tap abilities. You can tap it to deal one damage to target player or planeswalker. That's definitely a usable ability, but the more interesting one, pay one white, white, and tap return target creature and opponent controls to owner's hand. So a white creature that is bouncing our opponent's creatures, that's something you definitely don't see every day. This is a really interesting one that we can use that ability of bouncing a creature then attack with our commander and untap it and then use it again. Probably the best one though is Oriok Blade Warden. One and a white, again with the human soldier, wink wink. And it's a one one. Tap, target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is Oriok Blade Warden's power. So if we just use this on say our commander, right? We tap this, give our commander plus one plus one until end of turn because Oriok Blade Warden's power is just one. Then we attack with our commander that's now a four four we untap our Oriok Blade Warden, which is now a 4-4, four, four, and then we tap it again and give our commander another plus four, plus four, because now the Blade Warden's power is four, of course. So now our commander is an 8-8. Eight, eight. So this is a fantastic inclusion in the deck. I also think Dragon Throne of Tarkir will fit in this deck, four mana equipment. Equipped creature has defender and pay to tap other creatures you control, gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is this creature's power. So you equip this on a creature that you don't really want to be attacking with. So we just stick this on like a 2-2 creature, for example, right? We pay two and tap, and all of our other creatures are going to get trample and plus two, plus two until end of turn. Then we use Terranika's ability on that creature, untap it, now it's a 4-4, four, four, and we can use this ability again, and we're going to give our entire team another plus four, plus four, so that's plus six, plus six to our entire team. Pretty fantastic, I think. And Bastion Protector, you know, you could almost build your entire deck around this strategy. I have Bastion Protector in play. It gives my commander plus two, plus two, and indestructible. I attack with both. So my commander is a five, five vigilance indestructible. So now I don't have to worry about it dying. So Bastion Protector is an auto include in this deck for that reason alone. But now my Terranika is going to give my Bastion Protector indestructible. Now I have two indestructible creatures. I board wipe, destroy everyone's stuff. My Terranika and my Bastion Protector are going to survive, of course, and then I can rinse and repeat. I can just keep doing this over and over every single turn where I swing with my Terranika and my Bastion Protector, connect with whoever I want since everyone's creatures are going to be dead. I think there won't be a lot of blockers kicking around, and then I can just keep board wiping over and over again, destroying everyone else's creatures, and my two creatures will survive. Really interesting commander, I think. There's a lot of different ways you can go with this because it is untapping and all also making the other creature into a 4-4 and also making it indestructible, right? But coming in at number one this week is Skeleton Ship. A really interesting one. And this wasn't difficult for me because I actually just recently did a Deck Doctor video for one of my patrons with his Skeleton Ship deck. So I already had a lot to work with here. 
Three blue and a black. Legendary creature Skeleton, and it's an 03. When you control no islands, sacrifice Skeleton Ship. So gotta make sure you got islands in play at all time, but that shouldn't be a problem unless maybe one of your opponents cast an Armageddon. The ability we're gonna be building around here though is of course tap, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So this is a minus one, minus one counter themed deck. Obviously nothing new there. We see this with Hapatra. We see this with the Scorpion God. This is doing the same theme though in blue and black, which can be a little bit different. Obviously we're gonna throw the auto include minus one, minus one counter stuff in here like Blowfly Infestation, Crumbling Ashes, Black Sun Zenith of course, because you know we're gonna throw board wipes in this deck anyway, might as well be with a minus one, minus one counter theme. Bane Whip Punisher is gonna be great here as well. Puts a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. And we can also pay one black and sacrifice Bane Whip Punisher to destroy target creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Grim Affliction is going to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, then proliferate, which of course is great if we're going to be putting those counters on all of our opponent's creatures. So I threw Flux Channeler in here as well. Two and a blue human wizard, two, two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. Just one minus one, minus one counter is not going to kill a lot of creatures, right? So being able to proliferate is going to be important. Our commander has a tap ability again. So Thousand Year Elixir, there's that card again. Norit is another interesting fit here that I had mentioned in my 10 cards videos this is the kind of deck that you want to put this card in. Two and a black, Imp 1-1, one, one. untap target blue creature, right? So it's a black creature that untaps blue creatures. So this is the perfect fit for it. Also has tap, choose target, non-wall creature. The active player has controlled continuously since the beginning of the turn. That creature attacks this turn if able. If it doesn't, destroy it at the beginning of the next end step. Very interesting sort of goad ability that they have on there that you could actually use. Aura of Dominion is going to work great here. Freed from the Real is going to work great. We can just put this on our commander so that we can untap it and reuse that ability over and over. Of course, Fate Stitcher, once again, it's just an auto include in this sort of theme. Also, it can tap permanence as well, right? Freed from the real too, does allow us to tap enchanted permanent, which is why I put some inspired creatures in here, King Makar and Disciple of the Deceit, both fantastic creatures that trigger when they become untapped. So with all the tap effects we have in here, I think this definitely works where we can just tap them down. And then when they untap, we get to use their abilities. Another way we can give a huge advantage to our commander is with cards like Polymorph's Jest and Mass Diminish, making our opponent's creatures into one ones of course is going to make it a lot easier to kill them with those minus one minus one counters. Warkite Marauder is another great way to do this. One in a blue human pirate two one with flying. When it attacks target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness oh one until end of turn. So now we can throw a minus one minus one counter on one of our opponent's creatures. Target it with our Warkite Marauder when it attacks and of course it's going to die. This theme is a very similar theme to what I do in my Silumgar the Drifting Death deck. When a dragon you control attacks creatures defending player controls gets minus one minus one until end of turn so i'm doing a similar theme there and that's why i threw this in the deck as well also just works with the minus one minus one counter as well like if you put a minus one minus one counter on a creature then give it minus one minus one now you can kill two two creatures as well a really interesting fit in this deck xenic poltergeist and this was my patron's idea actually not mine one black black spirit one one tap until your next upkeep target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its mana value so now we can use our commander to kill our opponent's artifacts which is interesting your opponent's got a soul ring you can tap your xenic poltergeist turn it into a 1-1 artifact creature and then kill it with your skeleton ship this is a really interesting way to get your opponent's artifacts off the board in a demir deck i love that idea mickey is the unhallowed is also another great fit in this deck gives all our non-human creatures undying okay and of course that means when they die they come back into play with a plus one plus one counter on them and if we're putting minus one minus one counters on creatures we can put them on our creatures as well and that's going to cancel out the plus one plus one counter so now they can die again and then get that undying and come back again and we can repeat this process over and over and over again i thought nakara layer scavenger was an interesting fit in this deck has that ability whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield if it had one or more counters on it draw a card and you lose one life. 
So if we do an effect like a Black Sun Zenith, right, we're going to put minus one, minus one counters on all the creatures and it's going to kill our creatures as well, but we're going to get to draw a bunch of cards off of it. Also, we can just use our skeleton ship to put a counter on a creature we control that's going to die. And now it's dying with a counter on it and we get to draw a card. So it's some card advantage there. I think it fits. Dismiss into dream. Six and a blue enchantment. Each creature your opponent's control is an illusion in addition to its other types and has when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it this is a really powerful enchantment obviously that's why it costs seven now this just becomes tap our commander and kill an opponent's creature or tap our fate stitcher and kill an opponent's creature right any of our effects that can target one of our opponent's creatures can now kill it so that's a fantastic fit in the deck necro skitter this can almost be a win con in the deck one black black elemental one four with wither whenever a creature an opponent controls with a minus one minus one counter on it dies you may return that card to the battlefield under your control so now we can start stealing our opponent's creatures with this right we're killing our opponent's creatures anyway with minus one minus one counters now we're going to get them it can be a way to help us close out the game right just killing your opponent's creatures isn't going to win you the game but if we're going to get them now we can use them to our advantage will breaker is another way you can do this whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control you gain control of it for as long as you control will breaker so again now we can just use our commander's ability to gain control of our opponent's creatures and I thought Beguiler of Wills was a great fit here as well. Since we're gaining control of our opponent's creatures and we're also in an untap theme where we can untap our creatures all the time, Beguiler of Wills is going to be a great fit. Three blue blue human wizard one one tap it to gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to the number of creatures you control. So we're going to have a fair amount of creatures in play, I think, at any given time. We got 23 in this deck. Now we can just start tapping our Beguiler of Wills to gain control of an opponent's creature. And heck, let's put a Freed from the Real on there. Untap it, use it again. Untap it, use it again. For every one blue mana, we can gain control on an opponent's creature. And wouldn't you know it, since we're getting more and more creatures into play under our control, this ability is going to keep getting better. Better and better the more creatures we steal really fantastic deck i put together here i think really fun again i got to give my patron evan butler a little bit of credit for this one because i did take a few of his ideas it, it made my life a lot easier putting this deck together for sure needless to say so the deck list for this one is in the description below check it out if you want to give it a ride the poll for the next video is in the description below as well go vote to see which commanders will be in our next underwhelming commanders video but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.